Okay, let's talk about the ISEE upper level math uh, entrance exam. And we're gonna do a quick uh, practice problem here, uh, kind of see where you're at. Um, as you well know, if you're watching this video, the ISEE upper level uh, math, and I don't know if I'm speaking to the parent or student or both of you, but obviously this particular um, uh, exam, entrance exam is used for entrance into you know private high schools, magnet schools, etc. So if you're taking it, I assume that you know you're trying to get into a great uh, you know secondary level uh, school. So congratulations on that. It's definitely a worthy endeavor. Um, you know, all schools are not <laughs> equal, as you probably well know. So some schools, you know, uh, in a in a private sector or top schools will require you to, to take this particular exam. Um, and if you look on the ISE, on the upper level math, there's a considerable amount of math that, you know, could be on this exam. So I have a, a nice little pop quiz here that we're going to uh, kind of cover this particular problem here in a second. A little bit about me. I'm a math teacher. I've taught uh, middle school math, high school math, and beyond. Um, and I also have an actual test prep course for the ISE. Uh, ISEE upper level math. I'm going to leave the link uh, in the description of this video to that particular course if that's something that you want to check out. But let's take a look at this practice problem and let me just tell you what it is and then uh, we'll talk about it. So I have a function and I want you to tell me the domain of this function. Okay, so of course I don't want to tell you too much about the problem because uh, you know, this is something that you should uh, know but again let me repeat it so I have this particular function f of x and I want you to, to tell me what is the domain of this function so you might want to pause the video and work on that if you think you can solve it okay so let's uh, get into it now I don't want to um, turn this into a complete lesson about functions this is a massive topic in mathematics and something you absolutely need you know need to know about to be uh, really prepared for the ISEE upper level um, and of course there's the upper level and then there's the, the middle level math so if you're looking at the upper level you're talking like you know high school level math and functions is a huge part of algebra something that you definitely need to know and something fundamental about functions is this concept of domain so the domain of a function all right the domain of a function is our input values input if I could spell that correct <laughs> input values so it's our input values into a function. So you're like, okay, well, it, it's a, okay, I get that. So like, for example, if I wanted to find f of 2 of this particular function, everywhere I would see x, I would replace it with 2, right? So I would have 2 over 2 squared minus 1, and we can simplify that further. That's 2 over 4 minus 1 or 2. 4 minus 1 is 3. So f of 2 of this function is two-thirds. Okay, so everyone out there hopefully say, okay, yeah, I, I got that. And if, you know, if this part right here, you know, if you didn't understand what I just did here, then that's a real red flag that you got some work to do for this particular exam. But don't stress out and panic, you know, you just need a good methodical approach to, to studying. So again, you know, whether you have your own material, uh, have a tutor, you, you, you need something, you know, comprehensive to study from, or you want to check out my ISE uh, course. But let's continue on with this particular problem. So if I'm evaluate, evaluating this function here for, for a particular value, only one value, 2, I get a value out. So that's, that's fine. So 2 would be what we call part of the domain of a function. And the domain of a function is the input values the input values of the function, but really the what the concept of the domain is the allowable values that we can input into a function. So you're saying, hmm, what does that what does that mean? Well can I just put any value into a function? Think of a function as like a machine, like a washing machine or something, right? You you could put what can you put into a washing machine? You could put clothes, you could put detergent, etc. But if you put in bricks or you know, gasoline and things like that, right? That's not going to work. <laughs> so you can't just put everything into it. And some functions have, uh, you know, you can't just put anything into the function. You're like, well, are there values that sometimes will blow up the function and, and, and uh, you know, and break it? Yes, there is. When we're talking about the set of real numbers, there are situations that we have to be careful for, uh, careful to not... Um, uh, um, 
put in to a function. So let me go ahead and just show you what those are and then we'll, we'll continue on with this particular prompt. So if I plug in an input value into a function, some input value, and I end up with a zero in the denominator, that whatever that in particular input value, if it caused a zero in a denominator, that we can that input value has got to be eliminated from our uh, domain. Okay. Also, if I plug in a particular input value and it causes a negative uh, value, a complete negative value underneath the square root that also has got to be taken out of our domain when we're talking about the set of real numbers. And generally speaking for this particular exam, that's what we're going to be um, focused on. So, so anything here that could cause this to happen, any value that could cause the, these uh, situations to happen, we want to eliminate from our domain. Everything else is, uh, that, you know, if there's numbers that don't cause this to happen, then they can be part of our domain, no problem. So looking at that, is there any values that you see right off the bat that could cause we don't have any here again let me just put this here we have the square root and we have a negative uh, underneath the square root or a zero in the denominator so are there any values that you can think of here that could cause these scenarios well I don't have any square roots in this function so I don't have to worry about this guy but I do have to consider what values could cause this to be zero this denominator down here okay so what what are some values that could cause this to be zero? So hopefully you see that, well, one, right? If I have one squared, so let's take a look at this. If I find, if I try to evaluate f of one, I'm gonna have one over one squared minus one. So this is gonna be a problem, right? One squared is one, one minus one is going to be, one minus one is zero, boom. I have a zero in my denominator, so one cannot be part of our team, unfortunately. So we're gonna to have to take one, kick them out of the domain. So our domain, so far we have to eliminate, uh, we have to eliminate one from our domain, okay? Now, is that the only thing that we have to, to eliminate uh, from our domain? No, because if we find what, uh, if we look at f of negative one, Okay, we're gonna have the same issue, right? So negative one squared is going to become a positive one and we're gonna end up with a zero. So we're gonna to have to eliminate negative one as well. But those are the only two values that could cause this denominator to become zero. So our domain, and there's a lot of ways you can define the domain, there's interval notation, etc. but it's all real numbers with the exception of x cannot be one and negative one. So the way I could really do this here, I can say, okay, x squared minus 1, when are you equal to 0? Because whatever values of x you're equal to 0 to, that's what I need to stay away from. So I can just solve this basic quadratic equation. That's x squared equals 1. I take the square root of both sides, and I'm left with x is equal to positive and negative 1. So that's another approach you could take. But again, kind of a simple little problem, but we're talking about big picture concepts about functions, domain, etc. We didn't even get to talk about range, and, there, and this is, you know, can be a much more complicated version of this particular problem. But functions, um, huge area of mathematics, something you definitely want to know a lot about for the ISCE, um, uh, upper level um, uh, math exam. But um, again, let's go ahead and call, uh, call this a wrap. I can continue on and on about functions. That's not the purpose of this video. But hopefully you did learn a little bit more than maybe you knew. If you want to check out, uh, again, my uh, ISE uh, upper uh, level math exam test prep course, I'm going to leave the link in the description of this video. It's super comprehensive. You can check that out. Also, on my YouTube channel, I literally have hundreds of math videos that can help you out here. So hopefully you'll consider becoming a subscriber. And I'm posting all the time. If you enjoyed this video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. What um, what specifically are you taking the ISE for? Are you going to a, for a magnet school or is it a private school? Um, you know, uh, you know, what's your goals in terms of hey, is this particular school, you know, kind of the where you think you need to be in terms of maybe getting into a top college? Uh, any kind of feedback is great feedback for me. Uh, so it lets me know how I'm doing. It also gives me future ideas. Uh, um, ideas for future uh, videos. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best on uh, this particular exam. You know, like any exam, whether it's SAT, ACT, ISE, you know, you're going, you get what you put into it, okay? And you got to respect how, you know, the level of math that's on these exams. Don't, even if you've done well in math, don't be 
comfortable. Even you know, uh, you know, oftentimes there's a lot of students out there like, oh, I get A's in math. I know a lot of math. I took all that math. I, that's not enough. I have a degree in math. I have a master's degree. I constantly have to kind of review to be at my best. So you're going to have to review and make sure that your all this stuff that you learned is like you know you have it's like on right there your retention is you know like really really well because it's a lot of information to retain. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best. Thank you for your time and have a great day.